I'm so excited to be here to show you the Baby Lock Accolade. It works so easy and does so many things. What I'm going to do right now is thread it for a five thread safety stitch. Why would you want to use a five thread safety stitch? Well, sergers are typically for finishing. So uh, a three thread would just like finish the edge and keep it from fraying. A four thread would be for seaming together a knit fabric, like maybe uh, a t-shirt or something like that. But that doesn't really have enough strength, uh, strength on a cotton fabric. When it's stretched a little bit, you'd start to see the seam. So there's a special five thread that has a chain needle stitch next to a three thread overlock. And it really is the right stitch for doing construction um, when you don't have to press your seam open. As long as you can leave your seam pressed to either side, it works just great. It's good for pillowcases and things like that. It's great for pajamas, anything you don't have to press open. So let's talk about how to do that. So this is the Baby Lock app Accolade. It's one of the models we have that does a five thread. Um, and this one is super easy to use. Right now it's set up for a three thread. How do I change it to five? Well, it's very easy. All I have to do is look at my chart. So Baby Lock has this great chart that comes with the machine for every stitch it does. And it tells me here exactly what to do. So it tells me where to put my needles, where my settings are supposed to be, and how to get this all to work properly. If I follow those directions, it's just going to stitch. I'm not going to have to do anything. It'll just be perfect. So I always start at the top left, and I think that's important. A lot of people um, will jump around and say, well, I kind of know what I'm doing. But then you skip steps, and then it won't work properly. So I'm going to start right at the beginning. The first thing I always do is take out all my threads. If I don't take out all my threads, it's possible that I forget that a thread was supposed to change positions or, or maybe move, and then it won't stitch properly. So I pull them all out. I can do that because the baby lock is so easy to thread with its jet air threading, it doesn't take any time. So I just pull it out. Now I set everything up. So there's this neat little door here, and it has all my stuff in it. So I'm going to take out my little screwdriver because it shows me here the very first thing in the upper left is where my needles should be. I should be in overlock position one and cover or chain stitch position three. So right here on the um, on the needle clamp, there is five needle positions. And I'm going to put it in the two that are indicated on the chart. So it's so easy to do. I have a needle in here that uh, I took out when I set it up for three thread. And I always tell you when you take a needle out to throw it away. But I know I had just this is a brand new needle. Shh, don't tell anybody. I'm going to lower the foot. I'm going to slide this in to cover stitch position three. Now it didn't go all the way up. There's a little hole here. And I don't know if you can be able to see it on the camera, but you can see that the needle's not there. I'm going to loosen the screw. And now you see it flash. If it flashes, that means you can see the top of the needle. Then you can tighten the screw. Now I know it's all the way up. Now the other needle needs to be in position one, which it already is. So I'm not going to touch that one. It's ready to go. So I don't need the needle screwdriver anymore. I'm going to close my little door here. I want to set my stitch length for three. So here it says standard, and I put it on three. The other thing would be rolled hem. So if I was doing a rolled hem, I would flip that around. My stitch width should be set to seven and a half. That's this dial here, and it's already to seven and a half. Notice seven and a half also is five. It's the same setting. That's because it's seven and a half from this needle, millimeters to the knife, and five millimeters from that needle to the knife. That's what those numbers actually mean. It tells me to put my stitch selector to A. So I have all these different settings here. Put it to A. Wave or overlock. I'm doing overlock. Wave or decorative stitches. I'm not doing that right now. <clears throat> and this machine does not use tension. It actually can measure out the right amount of thread for all of the overlock stitches. But when you do a cover or chain stitch, you do have tensions. So it's telling me to have my chain needle on four to six and my chain looper tension on chain. So on the side here, it says chain or cover. So I'm going to put it in the chain area. And on this side, from four to six, has a little line. So what's in the middle of four to six? Let's try five. And that should work. It's really very, very forgiving. My upper looper here, it says up. So this is my upper looper. For those of you who don't know, when you go to do a cover hem, that would drop down below the plate because you'd want a flat surface here. But since I'm doing overlock, it's up. And it's already up. If I wanted it down, I would click this to down. And then it says to have my blade up. And that's because I'm doing, again, overlock, and I want it to cut. If I were doing cover hem, I would not want it to cut. So I put the knife down. And then this piece here is called the knife cover, and it protects your finger. So again, if I were doing a cover hem, that would come off, and I would put a flat table there. But I'm not doing that right now, so I'm going to leave the knife cover on. 
And that's what my little chart tells me to do. And then it says not to use the subsidiary looper, which is this here. We'll get to that in another video. That's for two thread surging. Now, if I look here on my chart, it tells me which thread paths to use and how to thread them. The nice thing about this machine and all of the Babylock Jet Air threaders is I can thread it in any order I want. Normally with a serger, you have to thread the needles last. You have to thread upper looper, and then you have to thread lower looper, and then you have to thread the chain looper, then you can thread the needles. The baby lock allows you to thread in any order. It has these things called tubular loopers. So what that means is the thread can get shot right down there and out the hole it needs to go. So the way a serger works is it has to go one, two, three, four. The threads have to go in order. So if you break the second thread, you have to rethread three and four. But because I have that tube, I have one, two, three, four, I break two, I can shoot it right underneath back where it belongs so that everything works properly. So I'm going to purposely thread the needles first because you can't do that. It's against the law. But we're going to do it now because we're working with, a, with this machine. So I'm going to take the thread and come up. <clears throat> I'm going to put it in the, um, I'm using the right needle so I'm gonna uh, of the chaining needle. So I'm going to go in the right slot and just click it in in the back there, come down, up, and down. So that's just like a regular sewing machine. And then I'm going to go in a guide here, and in that guide there, and then thread the needle. So there is a, um, a needle threader that comes with the machine, um, but I like using two fingers. I can do it pretty straight there. The two finger trick, <clears throat> when you do it with one finger, your your wrist makes your thread rotate. So by using two fingers, it goes in straight, and it, it's very easy to do. I'm going to do the next needle, which is overlock, uh, the overlock needle, and it says overlock right there, and that's going to go in this thread path. I know that because I looked at my chart, and I'm just going to come across into my thread guide, and do my two finger threading. This one's a little harder because the um, the needle's a little further back. Whoa. Did you see me miss that? Don't tell anybody. Get it right in there. And then you just kind of run your finger up the back to grab those fibers, and you can pull it right through. So that that's the two needles, right? I'm going to leave them there for now. Now I'm going to do my loopers. The loopers are the coolest thing. I'm going to touch this down to threading. I'm going to turn the wheel until these little tubes lock. See them just shoot across? Now I can thread in any order. I have an upper looper, a lower looper, and a chaining looper. It doesn't matter which one I do first. I'm going to do the chaining looper first because it's going to be the hardest for you to, to see. The rest of them are so, so simple. So I go in the top guide. I'm going to come through this hole and around the bottom hook there and then over the top of this tension. You see how that's kind of slanted? That's to slide the thread into the tension disc. There's a little hook down there. I take my thread, put it in my little C for chain stitch looper, and I push the button that says push. Pretty easy, right? I'm going to open this door. This is where I want it to be, and it's not there yet, so I'm just going to pull a little bit of extra thread so there's a little slack there, and then push the button again. And there's my thread. It came through. So that means there's enough. Okay? Now I'll do the upper and lower loopers. Those are the really simple ones. So the upper looper goes here. And the lower looper, so I'm lazy. I'm standing already, so I'll do these the tops both at once. The lower looper goes there. And now I can do the two loopers here. <clears throat> so the upper looper. Now watch, this is too short. I'm doing it that way on purpose. I'm going to put it in the U, and I'm going to push. And it didn't come out the upper looper yet, but you see how it's a straight line? I'm just going to grab some more and get some slack going. And then when I push this, it shoots right out the little hole there, ready to go. And I'll do the same thing with the lower looper. And I always do it that way, because why have a whole bunch of slop over here for me to get tangled on? Let it go. It's not long enough. But then I just give it a little pull and shoot it again. Get it in that guide. Still not quite out. Get a little bit more, and then I can grab it. So it's tucked under the looper right here. So I'm going to just grab my tweezer, which is in my handy dandy little storage tray. Well, there's a lot of stuff in that storage tray, isn't there? 
put that in there because then I can just grab this thread here and bring it to the front. So now I have all my threads. I like to take them and put them all under the foot. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to surging so I can raise my foot and pull a little bit of extra thread and I just get it under the knife, in front of the knife, and under the foot. So what I want it to be is straight out to the side like that. I don't want it to be tangled up here. Now you actually can start this machine without pulling the threads to the side, but every once in a while you'll get a tangle, so I just find this a little bit more accurate. So I'm gonna close this up. I can close this one first, and I can close this one. And then I'm gonna do, a, I always like to do a test. This is really crummy fabric, but it's great to do a test because it shows me exactly what the stitching is doing. And I do the short side because I just want to see what's going on. I'll start to sew. There's a cutter on the side there. I can pull it through. And there's my stitching. So that's my three thread overlock and my straight stitch. So you see how nice that looks there? Three thread overlock with my chain on the back. That's a solid stitch. So that can be opened as a seam and it's strong enough. So let's do that. Now that I know it's a good stitch, let's go to our garment and do that. Notice I never reach around and raise and lower the foot. That's really, it's hard to do and it, it takes you away from what you're working on. So I just lift the, the, the beginning with my thumb, put it under. I use my line. So, so um, the uh, L there is going to be 5 eighths. So I line it up with the L and stitch. Again, I don't use the cutter on the side. I'm old school. I run around and just use the knife, but you can use the cutter on the side if you like. There's my nice seam, but this is what I want you to see. When you open this up, it makes a good solid seam. And I use tan thread on the needle, so that should show, but it's not showing because it's a good solid seam. It's an actual seam that it will last and stay. I have my overcasting here, so it's finished. It's not gonna ravel on me. Um, it's really a pretty well done thing. I don't have to seam it, surge one side, surge the other side, press it open. That's like a lot of steps. This is all done in one step, very easy to do. Um, and because you're a friend of mine and you spent the time watching this video, Albert said, I can give you this premium serger kit while supplies last. So we have a couple of these um, and while we have them, we'll be happy to give them with every serger purchased, whether it's an Accolade or any of the other baby lock sergers. Um, there's a lot of nice stuff in here. I gave you one that doesn't open or I don't know what to do, one or the other. I opened it upside down. So it has this little scissor, it has a pick for getting in there. And, and like when I tried to pull that thread out, it's just much easier. It has a serger um, stitch remover, which is actually a, a surgical razor blade. And it's very easy to get your stitching out and extra blades and a tweezer or two. Um, so all of that comes in this little set. And for limited time, while we have them, we'll be happy to give them away. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Ron with Above and Beyond Creative Sewing. I look forward to seeing you at our next video.